All right, hi guys. So it is April 9th, and I think we're gonna do it. I think I'm gonna start it. I think I'm going to do it. Um, so let's chat. It's been a long time since I filmed any form of reading vlog or anything like that, and I've really been missing just like filming videos and reading vlogs. So I feel like that's what I want to do right now. As you can see, I have Carrie Soto is Back by Taylor Jenkins Reid. Also, this is a little off topic, but this is kind of bothering me. The fact that the title of the book is down here and it's smaller than the author's name, I felt like this should have been switched. Because, like, we all know who Taylor Jenkins Reid is. But Carrie Soto is Back is the name of the book. Anyways, um, it's happening. I'm finishing out the McReaver universe. This is the last book in... The Maker of Universe that I have to read. Um, I read Daisy Jones and the Six, Malibu Rising, and Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo. All of those I read last year, and now I am gonna finish this out early into this year. Um, I'm a little nervous. I'm a little nervous. Honestly, I wasn't going to ever buy this book or even really read it because I didn't really think her connection to the universe was that significant, other than the fact that spoiler. Um, in Malibu Rising, she's Nina's husband's mistress. But then I was watching um, Sarah Caroli's video that she did with Destiny and Haley Fam, and she had to read this book, and she says she really liked it. And as somebody who doesn't like Sarah Caroli, doesn't really care for Taylor Jenkins Reid's writing, for her to say that she really liked the book, I was like, all right, I really need to read it. And then hearing the girls discuss it. I was like, yeah, okay, I seriously need to start reading this. I am currently um, reading reading and listening to a, couple, to a couple other books. I have not, like, since this year has begun, I have been, like, very trash with my reading. Um, I had, like, set goals for myself at the beginning of the year, but now I've just completely abandoned those. And, like, I'm just mood reading for the rest of the year, read when I want to read, read what interests me. I do have to stop buying books. My bookshelf is literally overspilling. But, um, yes. So, on top of this, I am reading Infamous. I put the pictures up of the book. Um, I'm reading Infamous. I'm reading Contract Bound. And then I'm listening on Audible to I'm Glad My Mom Died. And now we are starting Carrie Soto. I think I'm going to put um, Infamous on hold for a little bit because... I, right now where I am in the book, I'm roughly around 100 pages. It is kind of slowing down for me and the excitement has left. Um, But Contract Bound, I have been eating that shit up. But I do need like a little palate cleanser because I have been reading it like for the past three days nonstop. So, I'm going to start this book. I have company over so I don't want to like whip out my camera. But I'm going to start this book and then tonight I will give you guys my impressions. And let you guys know how it goes. Y'all, it is so beautiful outside that I like I had to come out here and read. Also, this is the playlist that I'm oh. This is the playlist. Hi guys, so don't mind me, I am just getting comfortable. It is currently 9.35 on March, <laughs> April 9th, wow. Okay, and I want to attempt to read this book in, I guess you could say 24 hours. Um, I'm currently on page 6, 17 actually currently on page 17 and this book is starting out really really slow for me 
I know Sarah said in her video that if it wasn't for the fact that she read the entire book in one day, she wouldn't, she doesn't know if she would be able to like put the book down, pick it back up in sessions. So I really want to try to do that. I really want to try to like read the book all within like one day, technically two. Um, I... I'm not pulling an all-nighter because I've recently found out that I am now an old lady and I can't really do all-nighters anymore but I am going to um read as much as I can like before I go to bed and then when I wake up read all day tomorrow it's actually the first time in a long time that I don't work on a Monday I normally work Mondays and I actually have tomorrow off and besides going to the gym like mid-afternoon I have no other plans normally I do like have plans on my days off but I plan on just sitting at home and doing absolutely nothing until I have to go to the gym so we're gonna be reading this book um not much has happened like I said we started at the U.S. Open yeah at the U.S. Open September 1994 and Nina Oh my god, am I okay? Carrie is in the audience with her father watching, um, what's her name? Something Chen. Mickey Chen. Break her record. And I, I loved how as they were talking about whether she was going to come out of retirement because it was like, if this girl breaks my record, I'm coming out of retirement. And I like how at the same time they were talking, we were going back and forth between them talking and the game. And you essentially knew that, like, the girl was going to be her record and she's coming out of retirement. So now we are just going back a little bit in her past about how, like, her father became her coach. Or, yeah, because you can say her father became her coach and a little bit about her mom and stuff. But I want to try to to get through this hefty, hefty book. Also, I will be reading, though. I, I will be having my palette cleanser. Contract Bound by Ella May. Ella May, I think they say her name. Um... Like, when I'm, like, about to go to bed. I like to read that. So, yeah, let's just do a bit of reading. I have to do some stuff on my computer. And then we're going to get into the reading. So, let's do this. Let's read a book in 24 hours. I've never done that before. I've never, like, read a book in one day. Like, a hefty book. So, let's do it. All right, hi guys. So, we are now in my room for the night, and I've decided that I wanted to tab this book, but we're gonna pick out my tabs. 
before we do that i feel like i should explain my like annotating system i don't really have an annotating system that i like specifically like every single book i'm gonna annotate da, 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 da. i just go a lot based off of feeling so i can show you i can show you another one of my books so i go a lot based off of feeling and like if I want to tab something, I'll tab it. If I want to underline something, I'll underline it. If I want to highlight it, I'll highlight it. So, I can give you guys a couple examples. But first, I'm going to show you guys my supplies that I use. I use three things. That's it. I use this pen. I got this in a pack of pens. I don't have the box anymore. But I got it at Muji. If I could find it on their website, I'll put up a picture somewhere to show you guys. But it's just this super thin tipped pen and I love doing this it creates the perfect lines when I am um underlining something so an example of that would be okay, like this for instance can you see it yeah that is like it's super thin which is what I really like and it doesn't bleed through to the other pages so I really like those pens and then I use these are my sticky tabs. I got them in a pack on Amazon. I'll find it and put a screenshot of it up. But you can probably see this has like a ruler. So I just line this up on the page and then do that. This is my pencil case. Bought this in Boston. The pencil case. But in here, I store my highlighters. It's this brand. And this is what I use to highlight. It's very faint. I will say there's a green color. And this pink one are bold. It doesn't bleed through. But it is like pigmented. Whereas these aren't that pigmented. Which I like to um, highlight more with these colors. But when I do highlight this is what I use. I try to match my sticky tabs with like each aesthetic of the book. I put the skirt away. But obviously this book is very much like this gold like bold yellow color so that's what we're going for i wasn't planning on annotating or sticky tabbing this book at all but something that i've noticed um with this book is this book it's a sports book technically when it comes to reading sports books a lot of the times they don't go through and explain this is the rules of the game this is how the game works that stuff you kind of have to research and do on your own but with taylor i'm saying it like she's my friend but with taylor jk reads she um does it where we're kind of learning with the character all right i have two options I have these clear ones with like these colors or I have like the full colors. I think I want to go with the clear. So for example, this says like her dad would be like game set match. What do we, why do we say this? She says because each time you play it's a game. You must win the most games to win the set and then you must win the most sets to win the match. So stuff like that, like when it talks about like game points and like how the game works, I really want to tab so that I can come back to it because I'm sure it's going to make a whole lot more sense. And when it comes to my tabbing, I don't have a system like this color for this. I literally just use whatever color. But I can confidently say whenever she's talking about technical stuff, I'm going to use this like mustard yellow color because... It reminds me of the book. I will probably update you guys tomorrow with what I've read and stuff because this camera needs to charge. I'll see you guys in the morning. you guys it's taking a turn i'm crying i don't know why i just got what the fuck is that oh 
I don't know why I just got so emotional, but um, I'm on page 34, and right now Carrie just let me take it off. Carrie just played her first like match. She's 11. She played her first match like match um against this like really top-notch junior player but then like a couple times over and she lost and her and her dad are like having this conversation in the truck on the drive back home and it just killed me because like i feel like i'm her and like all this kind of like pressure is put on her i feel like this line describes it so well um She's like looking out the window and she sees this lady like getting her mail and she's like, I wonder if she's having a terrible day like I am. Or just or maybe her life looks nothing like mine. Maybe she lived free of all this pressure, this sense that she lived and died with by how good she was at something. Was she burdened by the need to win everything she did or did she live for nothing? And coming into this book this is reading about a topic that i don't really care for um especially because like so reading i'm glad my my mother died on reading this book it's one of those books where um a lot of athletes a lot of parents that were athletes and don't make it that far in their career once they have kids they put that on their children um from a very very young age from literally the minute that Carrie was born her dad had started putting her into tennis he when she was in her high chair he would put her out while he would teach and she would watch so tennis is all she ever knew there was literally no option for her other than tennis because there was no option ever given to her but tennis and that's always something that I see a lot of like see and hear a lot of kids that get into sports professionally because of their parents it affects them how much pressure is put on them immediately like this is what you are meant to do and this is what you're going to do and this is where you're going to go with it and it makes me sad because it's like if they have the option to everything else in the world I don't think they would have chosen this for themselves and I don't think they would have done this for themselves like a lot in this book I mean you're starting to see Carrie like actually want this herself but I feel like these early stages in her life you're really just seeing like she wants to do this because it makes her dad happy and she doesn't want to make her dad sad and it's just making me really sad and it's reminding me of I'm glad my mother died because in a sense that's the same thing that Jeanette got into acting for and she stayed into acting for was because it made her mom happy and she wanted to make her mom happy so yeah I'm just really sad and emotional I don't know why it like hit me all of a sudden but yeah just thought I would update Alright okay, guys, so I for sure <clears throat> left my microphone, so I'm hoping y'all can hear me, but I'm gonna update y'all my books. So, Carrie and her dad got into an argument about her not being like the best and him like kind of reaching his end goal with her as far as being the best and she called up this coach from when she was younger and now he's got a culture and she was on the phone talking with him the whole time like we'll do it da 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 don't tell anybody bitch she turned around her dad's there crying I literally had to close the book couldn't read it so I will pick that up later tonight hi guys so I wanted to talk about my tabbing system for Carrie Soto is back because I don't remember if I ever finished talking about it or not but I've kind of gone everywhere with my tabbing but also I've kind of kept it the same so the main colors I'm using is this like mustard color this light red this dark red the lighter red colors I use for funny moments um, like when she was in the interview and the interviewer told her like you should smile more and she immediately like stopped smiling for the dark red tabs like the wine color tabs I use that for kind of like 
competition like crazy stuff like kind of competition shocking stuff like when her and her dad are kind of arguing about him coaching her i've been using the dark colored wine colors for the green i've been using it for more so kind of like quotes and like things that i think have a deeper meaning but i also don't want to underline i So I am on page 69, hitting the 1983s, and then there's one more section. I think it's like the 1990s, and then I'm at the comeback. But we just got our first mention of the sort of like timeline cross between Malibu Rising and this. We talked about, well, we didn't talk much about it. Um, what's his name? Brandon Rennell was mentioned, as we all know, who's Nina Rivera's husband. If you read Malibu Rising, you know what happens. So that's going to get real nice and messy. Like I was saying, Miss Carrie Soto. So we kind of got our yeah first mention of that. Um, she and her dad are now talking again after not talking for 11 months. I didn't realize that when they um, like got into the argument that like they would just completely cut contact for literally almost an entire year that's absolutely crazy and that's also why they say like don't mix business and family life um yeah that's all i have to say about carrie soto so far i kind of want to get like deeper into the book before i come back in i just opened up to a random page and i hit the 1995 Australian Open. That's when I will update you guys next. When I reach that section. Um, but yeah, this book, it's a slow start so far. So hopefully it gets... I mean, it is good. It's just I really don't have that attention span to like sit and read it. Hi guys, so it has been so long since I've updated this reading vlog. I just got updated on where I am in editing and where I am the last time I talked to you guys about the book. I am currently on page 235 and I have 129 pages left before I finish the book. I've done a ton of reading today. Um, and I honestly was going to attempt to finish the book today, but I think I'm going to go between, like, obviously tomorrow, I'm going to try, um, between tomorrow and Tuesday, I'm going to try to finish this book. It's currently May 14th, um, well, definitely May 15th, but May 14th, we haven't gone to bed yet. Happy Mother's Day, by the way. Um, so, so much has happened since I've started, the, since I last updated you guys. I literally said that i was gonna update you guys like way back when um the first australian open happened so much has happened since then um i also just finished editing my tabbing system and you probably saw i added a new category romance because there is a subplot of romance in this book and it's been really good um carrie won a couple games she's lost a couple games right now she had just lost i think it was the australian open but before this tournament was supposed to happen carrie's dad told her like clay is not your best feature at all atanovich is so much faster than you like she was faster than you if you were even like in your younger age younger body she's faster than you now that you're much older um he's like but 
you need to beat her in a tactical point of view, not from a speed point of view. And Carrie was like, yeah, we'll beat her in a tactical point of view, but in order for me to win, I need to be faster than her. And essentially, her focusing on her speed was her downfall and led her to lose the game. Um, so after the game, she wanted her dad to like console her and tell her everything was going to be okay and that she is an amazing player and that she's the best in the world and that's literally like what was the fallout for their breakup the first time was that her dad she felt like her dad wasn't praising her enough and her dad was like this is literally all i do so a couple of things that i underlined and tabbed um was when her dad said you have to make peace with not being the perfect player he said that is giving up. I won't do it, I said. Um, another thing I tabbed was, was when Carrie's dad says, Everything we achieved is infirmable. We have it. And then the next second, it's gone. You have that record. You may lose that record. Or you may defend it now and lose it in two years all over again. I wish you'd accept that. Oh, yeah. And also the fact that Bo and Carrie finally got together so exciting like the slow burn like build up is something that i will say like the romance subplot i can't lie when the book has fallen short for me has kept me going kept me reading because i'm like i want to know what's happening like between Bo and carrie but i really like how essentially this book is following carries like ups and downs especially the bond between her dad and her and showing the dynamic of father and daughter and coach and student You guys, I hope you guys can see me. Hold on, let me like. Wow. You guys, I got this new book light off of Amazon. I will like put a picture of it over here and I'll look in the description. Really good. My friend sent it to me. It has this little swivel thing so you can like pull one and it has like two settings. Really good. Anyways, besides point. So I am now on page. 258 i know i said i was gonna update when i got to the wimbley section but i have like this much before I, wimbley i have this much before i get to the wimbledon section and i was not expecting to update this early but yeah carrie soto and nikki chan are having drinks and i love this i feel like this is what i wanted to see um I love how although they're enemies on the court, they respect each other as people. And this conversation is just like literally them just understanding each other. Like when Nikki says, isn't it strange how you can get into this because you like to hit a ball around the court and then suddenly you don't belong to yourself anymore? As if it's okay for people to call you the beast just because you're strong and they can comment on your clothes and your hair and make racist comments and pretend they are just joking. Just wait until they find out I'm lesbian. I just love how, like, how... I just love how honest they are with each other. And, like, although they're not friends, they can just, like, have these conversations as if they were, like, friends and have been friends for years. You guys, page 316, do not tell me that Carrie's dad died. I don't know what to do. I should have known. I figured at some point her dad was going to die, but I didn't think it was going to be now. She hasn't even gone to the U.S. Open. He hasn't seen her win. He hasn't seen her retirement. Carrie Soto. Not Carrie Soto. Taylor Jenkins reads, you jerk.
way. No way. No way that's not how they're going to end this. You guys. Carrie didn't win. Her She didn't win the U.S. Open. And then a year later, she ends up as Nikki's coach. And right when Nikki is about to win her last title, it cuts off. It says, she's got this, Bo says quietly under his breath. I sit straight ahead, bouncing my knees. He grabs my hand to calm me. I sit forward, praying with all my might as Nikki pulls back and swings. And that's it. That's literally how it ends. That's how it ends. I can't believe that. I feel like being bamboozled. All right, you guys. So... I finally finished this book. I can't believe it. I'm finally done. I started this book. Like, I don't even remember, like, at what I started this book. Let me check. I started this book in April. So, end date is going to be May 20th. I started April 9th, May 20th. And I am going to give this rating a whopping four stars. Oh, wrong reading. Whopping four stars. I thought this book was great. At times, it was slow and it was dead. Um, but other times, it was really, really good. Little feedback from the audiobook. I'm so glad that I did decide to download the audiobook. It very much helped out a lot with this reading process. It made it a lot more enjoyable. I don't know who the... Um, I don't know who the Audible reader is. And this is, like, no hate to her at all. Um, whoever the, I, oh, God, I feel bad for not knowing their name. Um, this is no hate to them. But I do, did not, personally did not like the way that she read in Javier's voice. I felt like they could have hired a male Hispanic man to read for Javier that naturally has a Hispanic accent. It just sounded wrong when she was doing it. Not to mention the Spanish that was in the book, the little Spanish that we did get in the book, it was giving Google Translate very little Spanish phrases and all this, this and that. That is like probably my only like two big things to do with this book. Like my big two to do to do with this book. Um Everything else I really loved. I think, although I do think the pacing was like kind of slow, there was just so much good about this book. Like I have so many like quotes and tabs, like just flipping through this book. I have so many quotes, so many tabs, so many underlines. Like I literally have my like, that's my tab system. Um, And honestly, I'm complete in the McReaver universe. I think this was my last book for the Mick Reaver universe. I'm all done. Um, as far as Taylor's backlog, I don't think I'm going to be reading any of her other backlogs. I have to finish One True Love, um, but I think that's it. Maybe in another life, because that one I did start on my Kindle and I was like, I kind of want to see how that one goes. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I don't know what my next reading vlog is going to be, but I will see you in the next one. Bye!